What's remarkable is the same thing applies for PDs. So remember, we have a differential operator uh, discretized in both space and time. So let's say this is going to be replacing this is going to be replacing my my time derivative my time derivative here okay this is discretized using forward Euler and my right hand side is still the same delta x square and because it's forward Euler this is uk right my right hand side is expressed as the differential operator operated on the known quantities or the quantity at the previous time step. If it's backward order, the whole thing, the whole right hand side would be k plus 1. So now I'm going to apply the same Fourier transform but still only in space, right? Because in time we don't know if we can do that or not. So we still only apply this in space. Oh, I think I messed up with my case. So, so let me let me don't use k plus one here. Sorry, let's use something like m. Oh, anyway. So this is the stability region. So let's use m. Okay. Uh, once we use m, we can say that. U m of i is equal to summation of k goes from minus n over 2 because of aliasing and I have u hat m of k. Now this u hat is not a function of continuous time but a function of m, the discrete time steps. u to the j, k, i, delta x. Everything else is still the same. So when we plug this in, the time derivative or the discrete time derivative is only applied to here. So after doing the same thing we did before, we get u hat of m k, uh, k m plus 1 minus u hat of m k divided by delta t is equal to kappa times my 2 cosine delta x minus k uh, sorry k delta x minus 2 divided by delta x square times u hat of m k all right so now oh sorry this is delta t not delta x so so this comes from here this come from here now how can we analyze can somebody tell me in what cases is this equation stable? In what cases is the space-time discretization stable? Right, if you look at the previous one, we are doing pretty much the same thing, right? So, except for we have something more complex over here. Somebody tell me how do I analyze stability of this PDE now, discrete in both space and time. Right, so this is the same as our lambda, right? So, so we want to analyze that, we want to analyze 1 plus delta t times this kappa uh, 2 cosine k delta x minus 2 over delta x squared. This thing has to be less than 1. All right, but what about the k here? There is still I cannot decide about this unless I know what k is, right? So kappa is given. Kappa is from the differential equation, right? But k is something we invented by doing the Fourier series. So how do I deal with the k? Yeah. So that's a good point. Choose the worst case. K, right? That's that's what you are saying, right? So, in other words, this condition has to be valid for all k. So, for all k that goes from 
n over 2 minus n over 2, it's it saturated to n over 2 minus 1. All right. So that's actually the difficult part about making sure a partial differential equation is stable. That is, you have a lot of different modes mixed in the Fourier series, right? So if you have a, let's say, if you have an initial condition, the initial condition is usually not just containing a single Fourier mode. It usually, if you use any function except for sine and cosine functions, almost any other function contains all the Fourier modes. It's just the, the magnitude, it's, it's basically a linear composition of many Fourier modes. And as soon as one of your k is not stable, that component is going to be exponentially magnified and make your whole solution garbage. So in analyzing stability of the partial differential equations, you need to make sure that all the modes that can exist in the solution are stable. Okay. And now let's figure out what this condition needs actually. Okay, so let's copy what we had in the last slide. So delta t kappa delta x square to cosine delta x times k minus 2 has to be less than 1. And now let's try to plot them as a function of um, let's plot them as a function of k delta x, okay? I remember, uh, so let's plot this as a function of k delta x, and uh, I think let's use this here. So, so this is, um, so let's just uh, plot this 2 cosine delta x k minus 2 here and we know we need to multiply this thing by that right so that's a constant so let's define this constant constant c as kappa delta t over delta x square and we're going to know later on this number is called the so-called cfl number so so this uh I'll move this to here Okay, so this function, or this constant, times this quantity plus 1 is going to be the decision, a deciding factor in the stability analysis. So let's look at what this is. And remember, k delta x, because delta x is equal to 2 pi over n, and k goes from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1. So the range of k delta x is bounded between minus pi and pi. Right? Okay. Now, 2 of cosine minus 2. A cosine of k delta x ranges from 1 to minus 1. So 2 times this minus 2, or Again, I can write it 2 times cosine minus 1 is going to range from basically the maximum is going to be 0, the minimum is going to be minus 4, right? So I'm going to have a function that looks like a cosine but goes like that. And at the bottom, this is minus 4, which is equal to 2 times cosine of minus pi. This is achieved when when k is equal to minus n over 2, minus 1, right? So cosine minus pi is minus 1, another minus 1, minus 2 times 2. It's minus 4. All right? Now, once I multiply a number, once I multiply this number, which can range from minus 4 to 0, with the CFL number and add by 1. I want to make sure this number stays within the range of the circle. The circle goes from minus 2 to 0. I mean, also, also this is always a real number, remember? So, so I want to make sure that the number lies within that range. OK. 
okay? So I want to make sure this number, uh, which now I can write as 1 plus C times something that range from minus 4 to 0 has to be less than 1. So the less than, so the so we're taking the absolute value here, right? So that means without the absolute value, it has to be less than 1 and greater than minus 1. The less than 1 part is automatically satisfied because as long as c is positive, because the maximum of this number, 2 times cosine delta xk minus 2, is going to be 0. But the greater than minus 1 part is not going to be automatically satisfied. Because when this takes the value of minus 4, my c has to be less than what? C has to be first greater than 0 and less than what for this to be greater than minus 1? It has to be less than half. Right? Make sense? So this is called the CFL condition. The C and F and L is just the first uh, letter in the last name of three people who almost simultaneously discovered this law. All right, the CFL condition is, let me write this down, is kappa times delta T over delta X squared has to be less than